Hi everyone, my name is Steven and I've been a bridge structural engineer for seven years. I wanted to share my thoughts on the Francis Scott Key bridge collapse. I'm sure many of you have seen the video of the cargo ship impacting the bridge pier. Once this impact occurred, the bridge pier no longer was able to sustain any weight or load from the adjacent spans and the structure above, which is a truss, was required to support the load from two spans instead of one. Now based on the relative lengths of each of the spans, some members in the truss were required to sustain weights of four times what they were designed for. This led to the capacity of certain members being exceeded, which led to the truss failing and ultimately collapsing. In general, bridges are designed with a lot of safety factors. Engineers increase the assumed load on the structure and they also assume a reduced strength of materials in the components that make up the structure. Bridge codes require this and this ensures the safety of the structure. The overall safety factor can vary widely depending on the type of bridge, the component of the bridge, and the time of construction of the bridge. It's not a simple exact number, but I'll provide a minimum safety factor so you get a sense of how much safety there is in these bridges. So a minimum safety factor would be about 167%. This number may be up for debate, but it gives you a sense of scale. So that means bridges can take 1.67 times the expected weight on the bridge. Some components can take up to two times the expected weight, but most cannot take four times. So the loss of the bridge pier will usually lead to the ultimate collapse and failure of the overall bridge. Now let's turn our attention to the bridge piers. Maybe we should design the bridge piers to withstand an impact from a cargo ship. In order to assess this, we first need to understand the force from such an impact. Based on research in the field, depending on the weight of the cargo ship and the speed of travel, the force can be the order of millions of pounds. Barring designing massive concrete structures for every pier in the water, designing piers with sand force is not practical and can also affect navigational clearance for the ships. So what do we do? How do we protect bridge piers in the water? Well, instead of designing the piers to withstand the impact, we design methods of preventing impact. And there are many means of doing so. There are various types of structures that can be placed in the water to either absorb the impact from a cargo ship or to guide the cargo ship away from the bridge pier. Guide structures or fenders, which are similar to steel barriers on a highway, can resist minor impact and guide the ship away from the bridge pier. Other sacrificial structures include artificial islands or floating structures both upstream and downstream from the bridge pier to take the impact and prevent the ship from impacting the bridge pier. There are many factors that go into choosing any of these methods because each of them has strengths and weaknesses. The Francis Scott Key Bridge seemed to have some sort of protection at the water level, but not enough to prevent the hull of a ship from impacting the bridge pier. Overall, this is a really terrible tragedy that may have been prevented with pier protection, but keep in mind that many bridges, especially old ones, don't have pier protection and they can be very expensive to implement both during and after construction. In general, I think in the coming weeks there'll be a lot of conversations about the topic of bridge pier protection and we'll see what the future brings to bridges.